Yo, what up? How's it going? And welcome back for another video. Today's video, we're going to be doing a Vi guide for season 10. So this guide is mainly designed for maybe you're a beginner to the champion, maybe a beginner to the jungle, or maybe you've been playing for a little bit and you just want to know how to optimize your gameplay a little bit better for season 10. Just make sure none of the changes really changed how the champion works and anything like that. And this video will give you all the tools to set you up for that. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. All right, so here we are at your runes. So before you ever get into the game, you got to make sure you have the right rune set up. Um, the runes I have pulled up on the screen, I was kind of going back and forth which rune setup I wanted to put on the screen, but we're going to have the Aftershock set up on the screen right here. I really do truly think this is the best setup for a number of reasons that I'll get into, especially when we're doing item build. One of the big reasons uh, that I think Aftershock is superior in most cases, uh, although Hail Blades is very good, Conquer is decent. Um, the reason why I think this is very good is because Vi is really an early game champion that has a lot of problems that, that really snowballs on two items, honestly hits our power spike on two items. And she has a lot of problems in the late game being useful because she's essentially just going to be an ult bot. She's not a traditional frontliner. She has a hard time uh, 1v1ing other fighters in the late game. You know, that will scale, you know, champions like Fiora, champions like Riven. She has a hard time beating them in the 1v1. She really, her best use case is either 1v1ing the enemy carry or isolating the enemy carry in a fight. Um, and, you know, letting your team be able to fight the enemy team while, they're, while their carry is basically immobilized. And you stall for time while dealing a lot of damage. Um, is mainly how she functions in the mid to late game. Unless you're like crazy snowballing, then yeah, you can one shot with your ultimate and Q and do all that good stuff. But most of the time, in most cases, when you're playing Vi, you're you're pretty strong in the early game. You have this huge mid game spike with your Trinity Force, and then in a late game, you kind of are just an ult bot for the carry. You have you you can't really one v one people anymore unless the carry mispositions and you're able to one v one a squishy. But you can't really one v one fighters. Most people are going to outscale you. So this is the setup that just allows you to allows this champion to be a little bit more playable. Um, throughout the entire stages of the game. And really the Aftershock is pretty nice in the early game as well. Obviously Halo Blades is a really early game focused build and it works really well because Vi has a auto attack cancel, which um, whenever they changed Halo Blades, you know, last time they changed it, it buffed anybody who had an auto attack cancel. That's why it started being played. You definitely can go Halo Blades, um, especially if you're just smurfing on people and stuff like that. Halo Blades is gonna feel very nice. But Aftershock is gonna be most consistent for playing Vi in most cases, as well as you can go Conquer, but I, I'm really not a big fan of Conquer. I think it's okay on her. Uh, really, if you're gonna go in a, an aggressive setup, probably just go Hail Blades instead. But all right, let's talk about Aftershock. So we have Aftershock set up right here. Um, we have Shield Bash, which is gonna synergize really well with Vi's passive. Does feel pretty nice on her. Also makes you a little bit more tanky, makes your burst combo do a little bit more damage with the setup. I just think it's very nice on her. After that, we have Bone Plating. There's really nothing else you'd wanna take in that line. In the Shield Bash line, if you wanted to take Demolish, uh, would be I'd be fine as well, but I, I just like Shield Bash for just for the 1v1s and a little bit more burst power, a little bit more tankiness. I think it's really nice. And the last line, we're going to have Unflinching. The reason why we don't have our Revitalizer Revitalize here, which would synergize with her passive and her uh, in Shield Bash, you definitely could go that. But the reason why we have it here is because with this specific setup that I have right here, I don't have any tenacity in the rest of the runes. Um, and Vi is a really one-dimensional champion. If you're playing really one-dimensional champions like Vi, like, uh, you know, like Udyr, you know, champions that just go forward and don't go any any other direction and uh, and all that good stuff, then Tenacity can be very useful on those types of champion. Champions, Vi does have an unstoppable mechanic in her ultimate, but she's not unstoppable after that. Uh, so Tenacity can be very nice for, you know, getting multiple uses of your Q in a fight can be really, really useful. Um, so that's why we have it right here. You definitely could go revitalize and then take something different in the second tree. Take your tenacity from precision would be okay as well. All right, uh, secondary on this tree, I have domination. As I said before, you definitely can go precision and just take the tenacity ruins, maybe coup de gras, something like that would be fine as well. Uh, but the reason I have the domination set up right here is because we have tenacity set up in our resolve rune. So we already have that covered. And then Relentless Hunter is just so broken, especially on early game junglers, junglers that want to get stuff done in the early mid game. You just zip around the jungle super fast. It feels so nice. If you're playing a jungler that needs a gank early and needs to get some stuff done in the early game, Relentless Hunter is going to feel so nice on those type of champions. Champions like Zen Zhao, champions like Jarvan, champions like Vi. That stuff always feels nice on those. That's why we have it set, selected right here. Other than that, I have Zombie Ward right here. Uh, remember the thing I'm going to say about Zombie Ward, Zombie Ward's very good. Um, but if you're in really low elo, like let's say you're anywhere from like bronze to gold, 
Um, if you're anywhere, and or iron or gold, I mean. Sorry, I forget that exists. Uh, or you're just in normals right now, you're like a really new player, then Zombie Ward's not going to be very as useful. Uh, because one, uh, um, it's just sweeping is not very good in really low elo because no one wards. And even when they ward, uh, they don't even look at them or put them in the correct spots. They'll just ward line brushes and never ward like the tri brush or the dragon pit or go for special spots in the pit and stuff like that outside of the pit. They don't really do walkways. It's just not as useful if you're in really low elo or uh, in normal. So, but you can take totally take it and it'd be fine. But if you're really in low elo, you can just take something else like sudden impact will be fine. Cheap shots okay. Um, Ghost poros. Uh, especially if you're not switching over your sweeper very often, which if you're in low elo, it's maybe not as useful to sweep over your sweeper, then Ghost Poor will be fine as well. All right, on our stat runes, we have attack speed, which is pretty standard for all junglers, uh, for most junglers at least. Adaptive force and armor is going to be pretty standard. Remember, if there's a whole ton of AB, AP champions on the main team, maybe they have four APs and the opposing jungler's AP, then you can take MR there. Vi's first clear is pretty healthy, so that will be fine, and you won't have to worry about that too much. All right, here we are looking at Vi's items. So the first thing we're talking about is her core build. So on core build, we have our warrior enchantment first. Uh, I will say there are some Cinder Hulk builds you can go, and that's fine. Um, but Vi just makes a lot of use of the early cooldown reduction, and you do want to snowball a little bit on Vi because her biggest spike in the game is that mid-game spike after she has her Trinity Force completed. So the combined damage from your warrior enchantment combined with your trinity force power spike is going to feel so so nice um in in the mid game whereas a cinder hulk build would feel nicer later in the game but you're kind of missing your power spike uh and you just want to kind of double down on your power spike in the early game if you are just getting stuffed at level three you can maybe go for a cinder hulk build and just um and that would be the only time you would ever skip triforce and you just go for right i'm just going to be an ult bot i'm going to tank and be a big beefy boy all the good stuff would be very, you know, niche case scenarios, but 99% of the time, you're just going to go your warrior enchantment into a Triforce, and that's going to feel so nice. That's our big power spike in the game is right there. So I do have Boy Smite and Red Smite. Red Smite's definitely the superior one on Vi. You really don't have trouble getting on to people or sticking to them as Vi, especially post six. You know, you go in for the Q, hopefully you're on your Q, and then when the cooldowns, uh, when the CC is over, then you just layer it with your ultimate. By the time that's over, it'll about be time for your next Q to be up, especially after you have that 30% CDR. Um, so Blue Smite isn't really that useful to sticking to enemies. Yeah, I mean, there's some niche case scenarios where maybe you use it to, if you're able to walk up to your enemy, to slow them to guarantee that your Q hits and then can ult them if they flash away. There are some use cases for it, but really uh, Red Smite is just so OP and you really just don't need need to utilize Blue Smite. So Red Smite's going to be your best bet on Vi for sure. Um, we already talked a little bit about Trinity Force, but it's really when Vi comes online, she can make use of the attack speed and the build um, just fine. And, uh, and she has an auto attack reset with her E, so you can get really good use cases out of the Trinity Force. So you can go in with your Q, you can go with your Q, auto attack, auto attack cancel with a Triforce proc right there, ult them, and then when they drop down, you have another Triforce proc. It just synergizes super, super, super well with Vi's kit, and what, what, it's what allows her to power spike in the mid game and what makes her a tear in the mid game. After that, we have some boots, so we're gonna have the tanky boots options. Um, so we have, our ninja tabby so if they have a lot of auto attackers on the enemy team then we can take this you know maybe they have like a yasuo mid that type of stuff um and then we have uh, merc treads merc treads are very valuable on vi so if they have two or more hard cc champions i take merc treads on every single fighter every single game if they have two or more hard cc champions so if they have like you know like a leona and a ramus then 100 percent you're taking merc treads if you're not you're trolling um, you are never going to be able to do anything with those champions CC and you like crazy. All right, now let's look at some solid items and situational items. So <laughs> this one's a little bit different than the ones I normally do. Most of the items are in the situational tab. And then I only have two items in the solid items. I would almost consider these two solid items just core items rather than solid items. These items are going to be really good most games. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about those. First one I'm going to talk about actually is Guardian Angel, even though I have it second right here. Guardian Angel is so good on Vi. As I said, she spikes really hard in the mid game, but the difficulty with how Vi spikes is her build is really expensive. So Trinity Force is one of the most expensive items in the game. Um, so it's 37, 33 is how much it costs. It's so expensive. And if you're not able to snowball from there, 
and just continue buying these expensive items like hysterics, then you're gonna fall behind. You're gonna start to feel really weak and you, you just have to invest a lot of gold. But an item like GA gives you so much value for how much it costs. It only costs 2,800. It's one of the cheapest core items in the game. You know, it's on par with like the lethality items, stuff like that. Non-support items, of course. Um, it's such a cheap item. So you have your cheap jungle item and then you have this really expensive Triforce. And so in order for you to still stay with the game pace, gives you a little bit extra damage, gives you a bit more sustainability. I like to add GA after the Trinity Force. Makes a whole lot of sense there. Although if, and, and also if you're crazy snowballing, it's also a good snowball item. Cause it, especially if you have a big shutdown on your head and you're snowballing, it gives you a get out of jail free card. It basically ensures you win a team fight. Um, a lot of times GA can win a team fight that you otherwise wouldn't win without having it. And when buying it this early in the game, it helps you snowball. It helps you keep on pace with gold because you had to buy this super expensive Triforce item as a jungler, which you don't get a whole lot of gold after the mid game on junglers. It, ma it makes it to where you can keep on pace with everybody else. And then also can prevent you from having uh, your shutdown taken if you're, if you're snowballing. So it's good when you're snowballing. It's also good when you're uh, having trouble keeping pace because how cheap the item is. All right, additionally, we do have Sterex. If you're a hard snowballing, maybe you can buy Sterex before this, but I really just love GA after Trinity Force. I think it's so good. Um, but uh, Sterex is really, really great on Vi. Um, synergizes super well with our Shield Bash, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a solid bruiser item. It's just a really great item. Okay, look at situational items. So we do have our Maw Malmordius here. So we'd want to build our Maw Malmordius if the enemy carries on the enemy team are mostly AP damage, or maybe like their, their AD carry is non-existent. Like the physical damage on the enemy team is non-existent. They're so far behind, but they have like a Syndra who's one-shotting everybody. Then a Maw Malmordius is going to be nice. Remember, if you build a Maw, then you cannot build a Sterex. Um, the passives do not stack. So um, you can build this. There's a lot of AP threats on the enemy team. All right, let's talk about Stone Plate. It's one of my favorite items in the game. Look how cheap this bad boy is. It's 2,500. As I said, when you get to the late game on Vi, a lot of times you're just an ult bot. Um, that, let's just be honest. That's what She's an ult bot. That's why she's not played in pro play. We're not played a whole lot in high UO because it's kind of hard to control the game once you get to the late game on this champion. And it does kind of feel like the game's a little bit out of your hands. So stone plate comboed with something like a GA or, or another tank item can feel really, really nice to just allow you to feel like you're useful in the game still. So you have that big, you know, you go in like an ult bot, you get your aftershock proc and then you drop your stone plate to get those bit, that big health and resist. Um, it just makes it to where you feel more like a tank where you otherwise have built all this damage to be a mid game carry, then you can actually itemize this later in the game when you're not getting as much gold and you can function as a tank while also having these damage items that you needed for your mid game, um, which can make you kind of feel like a tank in the late game where you otherwise would be just kind of useless. All right, after that, we do have Dead Man's Plate. Dead Man's Plate is fine. Um, uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's difficult to fit it into the build, but it's fine. You know, if they have a lot of physical damage on the team, on the enemy team, and maybe you're a little behind and you want to, you don't have enough money for Sterex and you just want to go straight for, you know, Stone Plate and something like a Dead Man's. Uh, Dead Man's just lets you get in and get your stuff off quicker, as well as you are, um, when you have to charge up your Q and all that good stuff. Something I didn't talk about when I talked about boots, and I feel like someone's going to comment this and be like, but if you take, if you take boots of swiftness, it'll reduce the slow on your Q, but... As I said before, guys, like most of the time you are functioning as a tank in the later game and it's really not significant the boot this boots of swiftness, but it will reduce the slow that you are applied on your the self slow you get on your Q. So just heads up. I kinda went on a tangent around there, so probably shouldn't even say that. But anyways, the dead man's passive will just help you get in, be able to get your ultimate off a little bit easier, and then whenever you land, you'll be able to apply that little bit extra burst with the dead man's does feel a little bit nice. That slow on the auto attack does feel kinda nice, um, but you know, it's okay. All right, cool, we have Randomin's Omen right here. So remember Randomin's Omen, if they, if they have double crit carriers on enemy team, if they have a Yasuo comp, and after we built our main core items, this item's gonna feel really nice. Let's say they have a Yasuo Tristana. This item's gonna feel really nice um, to just kind of reduce the damage against the enemy. Um, right here we have Adaptive Helm. Uh, so there's really no other reason to build any other MR item other than Maw or Adaptive Helm. So Adaptive Helm is just, you know, it's really solid against, you know, champions like Brand, Zyra, uh, champions do Extended amount of damage, Cassiopeia, Rise, champions that are actually very good right now, Cassiopeia and Rise. Um, very solid against them. So if they're, the threat on the enemy team is that, and you're now starting to itemize your tank, it's going to feel nice. All right, uh, we have Thormel right here. Thormel's, you know, kind of a weak item, to be honest, um, comparatively to some of the other tank items. But if they have a lot of healing options, maybe they have an Aatrox. Uh, maybe they have Aatrox on the enemy team. Uh, Aatrox, maybe... Yeah, so with Conquer, and he's, like, doing Death Dance build or some trash like that. And then... Um, and they have like a Ash with Blade of the Room King. The Thornmail is going to feel pretty nice. 
Um, and that can function as well. You can fit that into your build, uh, especially if they have a lot of AD threats on the enemy team. You can fit this and, you know, maybe a dead man or a random one, even though the, the uh, cold steel doesn't double stack. But, the uh, you know, the, the passive thorns on the thorn mail feels nice. Uh, cool. The last item I have on here is a black cleaver. Uh, I was really hesitant to even put this on here. Really has a very niche use for black cleaver. It's only slightly cheaper than a Trinity Force, and really you want to spike as a mid game carry, right? As Vi. But if you are really, if you're kind of far behind, and let's say somehow you're playing in a game where the enemy team has three tanks, which almost never happens, by the way. Um, but let's say you're playing against an enemy team. They got a Ramus. They got like a Ramus, uh, Mundo, and Alistair on the enemy team. And then they're, you know, whatever. So they got like three tanks. Maybe it's okay to build this item. You make really good use of the armor armor shredding, stacking on your W. And uh, and the health is nice. You're going to be a little bit more tankier. And you get all the CDR that you would get with Triforce. So that would be the only niche case where you want to build it. But let's be real, guys, since... All the way since season eight, nobody plays tanks. Um, so Triforce is going to be your best bet, in the, probably ninety-five percent of the time. Uh, but I just put it on there just in case. Uh, most of the time, if it, there's any tanks in the game, it's one, and then maybe like a support tank, which isn't even a real tank, like something like Leona, who isn't like crazy tanky, like a Cho'Gath or something like that. So uh, you know, like a tank Cho'Gath. You know, a lot of people go to MP now, but um, so I just have it. It's a very niche case. Uh, most of the time, just build Triforce the example full build remember guys on these example full builds this is just what a full build could look like obviously tailor your build for what's happening in the game but if you build these items then uh, this should be a solid setup for most scenarios uh, this is just a general setup but remember if you need to swap out some items for maybe a little bit more damage build or maybe you need to swap items out for a little bit more a uh, little bit more specific defenses like an adaptive helm, something like that. Remember, you could switch this stuff out. But let's just go ahead and talk about this build and why I chose this as like kind of a standard, you know, if I don't know anything about the game, this, this build should be okay. Uh, so we have our warrior enchantment with uh, our red smite. We already talked about why that's good. We have our tenacity boots. So most of the time build tenacity boots, but obviously you can switch it out for tabbies if you need to. Swifties are okay. Uh, but anyways, cool. And then we have our trinity force right here. I uh, already talked about Trinity Force. You spike in that mid game, your mid game carry, and then you start to fall off a little bit. But to extend your carry carry potential, you can add a GA and a very cheap item right there. And then now we're going to start itemizing a little bit more for being tanky. So we get our Sterics right there, which will help extend some of your one shot potential on the enemy carry. So with this build, you'll still be able to one shot even when you start to build these tank items. Uh, but you're going to be a little bit more useful in the team fight now that you have this big shield comboed with your Aftershock. And then after that, we're going to round that out with the Stone Plate. Um, because at this stage in the game, you're probably doing a lot of team fighting and you're probably starting to feel kind of useless on Vi. So this will synergize super well with your Sterex passive. So when your Sterex pops and then you can pop the stone plate, you go in for your ultimate aftershock stone plate. They do a lot of damage to you. Aha. I have my, um, now I have my Sterex shield. I'm unkillable. And then you're in it. And then your, your Yasuo on your team just kills everybody. Um, so that'll feel really nice. And so that's why we have that set up right there. Um, so remember guys, this is just a solid build overall. This doesn't necessarily need to be what your build is every game. Make sure you adapt your build to what's happening in the game. All right, now let's quickly go ahead and talk about your abilities on Vi. So if you've never played Vi before, or you're just, you're pretty new to her and you don't really know what she does all that much. I'm going to explain the abilities right here. Uh, so we'll go through it pretty quickly. All right, Vi's passive is her shield. So um, you'll see a little timer. I'm not sure exactly how long the timer is. Um, but after Vi uses an ability, if the passive is off cooldown, then you'll get a shield that scales with your health and all that good stuff and scales with level. Um, and you'll get a, you'll get a passive shield after you use an ability, any ability. So your Q, E, or R will give you that passive. It is reduced. The cooldown reduction on that shield is going to be reduced, uh, by every time you proc your three hit denting blows on your W, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So we'll get reduced. It does work on jungle camps, all that good stuff. Just whenever you activate an ability, it'll give you that shield. All right, next we're going to talk about your Q. So that's Vi's little charge up thing. She charges up her punch and then she flies forward. Whenever she hits them, she slightly knocks them back. So we'll apply on Yasuo's, or Yasuo's ultimate is a knockback uh, CC. Um, okay, so let's talk about that. So Vi, she'll charge, uh, she'll you're, you have to hold the button down or maybe you have on quick, um, if you don't have it on quick cash, you can just press it and then uh, repress it again. Uh, so Vi does slow herself whenever she's starting to charge it up. 
and then she will dash forward. You'll see the indicator on the champion. If she runs into a champion, then she will knock them up or knock them back. Uh, essentially, it'll be a slight knockback and they'll be stunned during that knockback duration. Um, so that works like that. Uh, this is your main damaging ability. It does go through minions uh, and you can use it to get over walls. So it goes through walls and go through minions and you use it on jungle camps as well. This is your main damaging ability. This is going to be ability that you max first. All right, now let's talk about your W, which is your denting blow passive. So uh, this is a big thing that you'll play around with your damage. Um, so essentially what happens is when you auto attack uh, minions, monsters, uh, enemy champions, any of that good stuff, you'll build up denting blow passives, kind of like Vayne's three hit passive. When you hit the third passive, it'll give you a burst of attack speed for a couple seconds um, and, will, uh, and also reduces the cooldown on your passive shield. So reduces the cooldown on your passive shield as well as reduces the enemy's armor um, for a percentage, about 20% or so um, at rank one. So reduce the enemy's armor and reduce the enemy's armor, give you attack speed and will reduce the passive uh, cooldown on your shield, on your passive shield. It does not proc your passive shield though. You actually have to use an active ability for this to work. I usually max this second and usually you'll take this ability second as well. Uh, usually max this second rather than maxing E second. Okay, let's talk about your E. So your E is going to be a cone auto attack cancel. So what happens is uh, essentially you can uh, press this button to, uh, to make your next auto attack um, uh, proc this passive. So you press the button and your next auto attack will apply your auto attack in a cone. So you actually have to auto attack somebody and then everybody behind them in a cone, similar to a Titanic Hydra passive, will take the damage. Uh, will take the damage. You can store up two charges of this. It is an active ability, not a passive. I don't know if I explained that very well. Um, but essentially you can use that as an auto attack cancel. So when you're using Vi, you can auto attack and then instantly press the ability and it'll look like boom, boom, and you can auto attack cancel. If you're unfamiliar with what auto attack cancels look like, I'll show you what they look like at the end of the game. If you're completely unf unfamiliar with that concept and it'll deal damage in a cone behind the enemies, similar to a Titanic Hydra, you can store up two charges of this and it's basically your least damaging ability, but, uh, really the big value in it is using it as an auto attack cancel ability or maybe finish people off by punching a minion if they flash away and the, maybe the titanic hydra hits them uh, if you're not able to close the distance you can proc your shield with this ability so it's pretty nice all right let's talk about your ultimate so your ultimate is a point quick knock up it's like it's like a dunk right so it's a point quick knock up and you are unstoppable while you're channeling it so you'll press your point quick knock up on the enemy it has a similar range to tulia's w uh, so you do have to get kind of close to them uh, but it is you know, it's a little bit further than your Q range. Uh, so you do have to get uh, close enough to them. You point quick onto them and you will tether to them. And while you're tethered to them, you will be unstoppable. You're not invulnerable. So someone can kill you out of the air, but they cannot CC you out of the air. So if you're currently getting CC'd and use the ability, you will be unstoppable. You'll travel to that champion. Anybody in the way, you'll knock them away from your path. So if somebody's in your way, it'll knock them to the side. And whenever you land, you'll pick up an enemy and then you'll slam them on the ground and it will uh, it will apply damage whenever they land and will proc your aftershock as well it's a pretty solid ability it's what you play around in your mid game and it's basically your only use in the late game is to uh, pinpoint the enemy carry and dunk them onto the ground um, it does synergize really well with yasuo's ultimate so you can pick them up and then yasuo can ult and you both double slam them on the ground it does look pretty nice it's pretty sick um, and it's going to be the ability you play around in the mid to late game uh, is your ultimate right there. And I'll show you some combos you can use. I mean, Vi is a really straightforward champion. There's some very minimal combos, but I'll show you guys some combos at the end of the game. All right, let's talk about our uh, jungle path. Let's talk about doing that. So Vi is a machete jungler. You can go um, if you really wanted to, and there's a specific, like, very niche scenario. You'd want to do a specific path where you want to do the AOE camps. You totally can take Talisman, uh, but she does have a very good use cases for our... Um, or our machete. So uh, depending on what buff you want to start on, it really doesn't matter what buff you want to start on. If you want to just want to start on a bot, spot side leash, that's fine. And you can do a really quick three camp clear if you want to do this. Uh, it just depends on what side of the map you want to end on. But you can do a really quick three camp clear and get two ganks off before scuttle crab spawns, uh, which can be pretty nice. So you can do a buff, uh, a buff gromp buff or buff buff gromp. So if you start on a red, you can do red, blue gromp. And then let's say we start on the bottom side. 
then we can get a top and mid gank off before the scuttle crab spawns. You can actually get a really quick clear. If you don't want to do that, you can do a four camp clear, um, and you'll be able to get one, possibly get one gank off before the scuttle crab spawns, and you can fight for scuttle crab. Really depends on what side of the map you want to finish on, but let's say you want to do red buff, red buff, uh, wolves, blue, gromp. It's much slower, but it does get you quicker to level four. You get a gank off top or mid, and then fight over the scuttle crab on that respective side. That's a, that's a fine queer as well. Uh, if you really wanted to, there's a really specific reason you want to you want to finish on bottom side, but you want to queer, queer your full red side jungle. You totally could do a Krug's queer, where maybe you start top side. You do uh, you could do blue, go down to red, do Krug's, and then go down and do it. You can do Krug's pretty well with still with a machete start. Um, alternatively, if you really want to start finish bottom side and you're on you're on the blue side of the map, then you could just do the Gromp queer. The best queer is going to be the Gromp queer, where you do, where you fit Gromp into your first queer because you are a machete jungler. It is going to be really nice. You kill the Gromp pretty fast. So alternatively to what the queer I just said, you could do blue Gromp, red, and then you'd finish bottom side if that's the side you want to finish on. Maybe you're trying to avoid the enemy jungler or any type of stuff like that. Um, Cool. So we already talked about our skill order and we, we kind of already touched on this. We already talked about playing Vi in the mid to late game. So you do spike really hard in the mid game. Um, essentially, I didn't really talk too much about the area, but essentially in the early game, you are a ganking jungler. You can outfight all of the enemy junglers that are bad at fighting. So champions like Kane, you can outfight them as long as you land your Q. You can out brawl with them. You can out brawl with basically any of the junglers that aren't powerful in the early game. Where you run into issues is fighting... Uh, especially with Aftershock, is fighting other champions who are good at fighting in the early game. You may have some issues with defeating them, especially if they if they flash your Q and you don't get your Aftershock, you're going to lose every time. So against champions like an Olaf, like a... Uh, champions like an Olaf, champions like a Zen Zhao, champions like... Um, who else? Uh, Lee Sin, if you miss your Q and he lands his, you could definitely lose those trades. So against other fighters, you might have a tough time, but you do really well in 2v2s. And as long as you land your Q, maybe you just hit confirm your Q by getting your Aftershock, maybe get real close and you just instantly cancel it. You can win against those fighters, but it does get a little bit more difficult. Oh, a champion like Warwick as well. If they flash your Q, you have no chance of winning, um, is, is what's really tough about it. Um, in the early game, but all the champions that are not good at fighting, you know, champions like Kane, that type of stuff, you should be able to beat them in 1v1s. You are pretty decent in 1v1s and 2v2s early in the game. But again, if you have any of those really strong uh, fighters, you will lose every time you miss your Q. So especially if you're new to the champion, maybe maybe path in a way to avoid them and just look for 2v2s where you're going to be really strong. You're really powerful at uh, ganking. Your ganks are really solid even at level 2, uh, but mainly want to look for those level 3, uh, those level 3 ganks. They're going to be more useful. Cool. Let's talk about mid to late game. I already talked about this a little bit, uh, but we're going to talk, touch on it a little bit more. Basically, in late game, when you're in mid game, you're very powerful. So it's very similar to the early game. You're, you're pa more power. You're powerful, but even more so now because once you finish that Triforce, you can one v one a lot of those champions. You do still have a lot of difficulty with a champion. Let's say like Olaf. He can ult and basically. Uh, cancel everything you want to do. So a champion like Olaf is still going to be very difficult for you to 1v1, but your gank potential, once you get your level 6, is so free. Every time you have flash, it should be so free. You can essentially just flash in the range to hit confirm your Q, or you can flash in range to ultimate. If they don't have flash, it is a guaranteed kill every time. If you have flash up and ultimate up, you should be getting a kill somewhere with, with your laner. So you just want to snowball lanes. You can get yourself ahead, but you really just want to snowball lanes. And then once you have that Triforce completed, you can actually end up 1v1ing most people in the game, especially if you're keeping on pace with everybody. You're going to be very, very, very powerful. So anytime your ultimate's up, you just want to be using an off cooldown, um, especially if you know someone doesn't have their flash up. If you land your ult and you have anybody that's going to help you, you're going to one-shot. or You guys are going to kill them. And most of the time, if they're by themselves, you can just one-shot anyways. Vi is so powerful in the mid-game. All right, in the late game, guys, though, you're basically an ult bot. Uh, that big power that you had in the mid-game, you can extend it a little bit with buying your GA and Sterex and stuff like that. But um, junglers just end up start to fall behind at this point, just in the current state of the game. Especially champions like Vi, who are very one-dimensional, who are very have a very hard time team fighting. You know, it's against a lot of CC champions and stuff like that. It's just very difficult doing that. So now you're going to be optimizing a little bit more for tank, right? And you're essentially just an ult bot in fights that just either... If a carry mispositions, maybe you can one combo them and that's going to feel nice. But other than that, really, you're just ulting and causing a lot of disruption in the fight. 
uh, taking up a lot of their time stone plate in and maybe you can get out with a second Q charge you do have really small cooldown reduction so you can maybe go in with a Q ult uh, stall out their time with a stone plate and maybe get out with your second Q it basically is a lot how you function you can still 1v1 some people if they miss position but most Mostly in the late game on Vi, if the game gets to the late game, you are an ult bot, and the game's a little bit out of your hands, but you just want to be that big beefy boy that's going to, uh, you know, help your team a little bit. All right, we already really talked about uh, counters and stuff like that. Um, it's just, if you're going to miss your Q, you're going to lose to most other fighter junglers um, and people who are skirmish, skirmish heavy junglers. You're going to lose out to them if you miss your ability. A champion like Elise can feel pretty bad as well. She can repel out of your ultimate and your Q. So that champion is very difficult for you to deal with um, if they're very skilled at the champion. If they're not very skilled at the champion, obviously you can beat them, but they can dodge your aftershock in the early game with a repel, with a nice repel. Um, they can <laughs> repel out of your ultimate and stuff like that. So it does get pretty, uh, pretty unfun. All right, here we are in game. So we're gonna look at a couple of combos on Vi. So as I said before, Vi is such a straightforward champion. This little combo section is gonna be kind of XD, but I'll show you guys a couple things that you can do on Vi, maybe a couple tricks and stuff like that. So as I said before, Vi can go over walls, so just remember that she can go over walls and all that good stuff. That's pretty simple. Okay, now we're going to talk uh, about just a standard combo. The standard combo is going like this. I canceled an auto there, so I kind of messed it up. But essentially what you'll do, um, let me just talk about it first. So you'll go in with your Q. If, let's say, you're in range and you're going to be able to lane your Q, you can go with your Q. Once you hit them with your Q, you'll auto attack and then auto attack cancel with your E. So I'll show auto attack cancel with your E if you're unfamiliar how to do that. You're just going to auto attack and then once you see the auto attack go through, you instantly press your E. So like that. So you auto attack really, really quickly twice and we got our passive built up really fast. Um, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to Q in, we're going to knock them back, auto attack, auto attack cancel E. So we'll auto attack and then cancel with their E. We'll, uh, and then you can fit in an auto attack one more time and then ultimate right there. If they were the flash, they cannot flash. If you're on top of them, they can't flash out of range of your ultimate unless they flash over a wall. If they're near a wall, go ahead and ult before you end up doing that next auto attack. So again, it'll look something like this. Like that. Um, cool, that little slow part at the end was just my ult having the channel. That's the reason why it looks a little clunky. But again, the combo is Q, auto attack, auto attack, cancel E auto attack again and then ultimates if they were to flash when you're going in for that last auto attack you'd just be able to follow them because uh, how big of a range this is how big of a range your flashes you should be able to follow them unless they go over a wall you're near a wall like this you're scared they're going to flash over go ahead and use your ultimate right after you use your e and they will not be able to flash away okay uh another simple thing so here's a flash combo so let me just show something that is incorrect so if you flash while you're in your q animation it will cancel the rest of your q animation um, so it's similar to Jarvan's um, EQ combo. If I were to flash in place, I would not complete the rest of it. Um, so just know that first. Uh, there is a trick with that that I'll show you in a second, but before I show you that one, I'm gonna show you this other one. So essentially you can just flash again in range. Pretty simple, right? So you can just flash again in range. Okay, something else I'm going to show you. Let's say you're gonna charge up your Q. Let's say my enemy is right here right now, or you know, right there. And then I see them flash to the side while I'm in mid travel. You can just flash on top of them and it will apply similar to Camille's E flash combo or Jarvan's flash combo. It's a little bit more difficult to do, I think, than those other ones because uh, you don't actually see your champion traveling. Uh, but essentially, let's pretend like I'm aiming right here because my enemy champion is right there, but then they flash a little bit to the side to dodge me. Or maybe I just straight up miss. You can flash while you're still in the animation and it will knock them up where they're at if you land on top of them. So let's just show that real quick. See how that worked? Um, so I still hit the knock up even though I missed because I flashed while I was still in the animation. So it'll still work like that. So if you were to miss, you can just flash to get that. The only reason why you'd want to do that, maybe you can use it to trick people. I mean, maybe, maybe it looks like you're gonna go for them and you think you're gonna flash, then you can flash over and hit them. Or maybe you see them flash while you're in mid motion, then you can flash to hit guarantee hit them. And you can also extend the range just a little bit as well. Cool. Um, guys, honestly, that's pretty much it. Uh, you just need to know how to auto, auto attack cancel with your E, know when you need to flash on your Q. A lot of times it's just better to just do this um, than try to do the flashy extend the combo. Yeah, it's still a mist right there. It's not as consistent. Um, so not just, just better to flash before. 
I mean, you can't just flash after. And then the DPS combo where you go in like that, or you can do it a little bit different to where you ult earlier in the combo. I kind of messed up my auto cancel there, but I didn't add an extra auto. That's why it was a little bit quicker there. Boom. Yeah, see, that's a little quicker right there. And that's the DPS combo and all that good stuff. Guys, that's basically it. You can get over most walls like, you know, like this one. Um, you can get over this one over here. It's real easy because you can just look at the indicator. You can get over most walls that you can't with most champions. Um, I might not make this because I'm not touching the edge of the wall. Actually, I have to touch the edge of the wall. Yeah. See, most champions, you can't get over that wall right there. You can on this champion. Pretty sure you can right here as well. Yeah, for sure. And then this one's always the one that's tricky on a lot of champions, but she for sure can get over that wall. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Vi is such a straightforward champion. She's actually one of my favorite champions. Whenever I first started playing League, like casually with my friends, and I didn't even know about computer games. I was playing on a laptop where I'm going to get 10 FPS when I play. This was like my favorite champion back in the day. Anyways, guys, uh, I'm just drawing this out. I should not do that. Uh, this video is about 40 minutes now. All right, guys, I've said guys a million times, so I'm just going to uh, hover over the stop recording button so I will stop talking and we can wrap this whole thing up or I'll just keep talking forever and ever and ever. So bye. <laughs>